Well, hello, beautiful people, and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down the requirements and the guidelines of a business plan when you are going for the IDC, which is the Independent Development Corporation Funding Solutions. This is very important if you are someone who can one day actually knock on their door. My name is Tanisa Mahe, and I talk all things relating to business, making money, and the family life. So let us get right into the video. But before we do, I want to acknowledge my continuous supporters my subscribers i truly truly appreciate your support and anyone who's joining us today or coming through to the channel for the first time please consider subscribing and also switching on the notification bell so that you may be kept abreast of when we put out new content however we are consistent in putting out at least one video a week on a tuesday I know that I have not yet done a video that explains the Independent Development Corporation, which is the IDC. I'm going to do that in a separate video. But what I want to bring to your attention is just basically at a high level who they are and what they do. So basically, this is an entity that was established in 1940 based on the Independent Development Corporation Act. I think it's 22, 22 of 1940, if I'm not mistaken. And they were established to push the government's mandate of industrialization. They are an institution that is wholly owned by the government of South Africa. And number two, they are actually focused on, as part of their mandate and as part of the things that they do within the institution, they focus a lot on creating a realization of the National Development Plan and also the Industrial Policy Action Plan, IPAP and the NDP. They focus on job-rich industrialization. So their um, focus is more on ensuring that, you know, they promote industrialization that is sustainable Sustainable. They do prioritize black owned businesses that are empowered, industrialists, youth, women, you know, the basic um, groupings that the government is trying to develop because they were previously disadvantaged. I do want to also indicate that they do have different funding solutions as an entity or as an institution, but I'm not going to cover any of those in this video because I want to focus on the business plan guidelines in this video so that you may be able to understand because the business plan is actually one of the most important documents for you to have if you are to knock on such institutions. Even other, you know, funding institutions will require you to have a specific document called a business plan. But I, lo I love the fact that with the IDC, they've specifically put out guidelines you know that kind of give you an idea of what they would like to see or important areas that you want to focus on when you are building your business plan to unlock some of their funding solutions so that is what i am going to be getting into right now now Almost all business plans will have an executive summary. And I always make mention that the people that sit with these applications, like the committees that sit with all the funding applications that we submit, as many as we are in this country, as many businesses as we are in this country, these people are sitting with so much work that they need to do. So the executive summary kind of helps them to understand the entire business in a nutshell, in a high level, in a summary format. So the executive summary should contain a lot of important information that relates to the entire, you know, business itself. And it kind of summarizes the whole business plan. With regards to the IDC, they have specifically mentioned that some of the things that they would like to see in the executive summary include the stage of the business. When you're operating a business, it's not going to be at the same stage. There are people that are at ideation stage. There are people that are at, um, you know, the, the, the early stage of the business. There are people who are ex at expansion stage. There are people who are at growth stage. Like there are so many different stages that the business can be at and they want to understand, okay, with this applicant that is now knocking on our door, at what stage? is this business they want you to talk about the background and the history of the business i think it's important to understand where the idea came from if the business has already been started and grown what was the thinking behind what has been achieved thus far they want you to talk about the products and the services that you offer they want you to also touch on the industry and i think with the industry what's important for them around the industry is the fact that they've got um specific goals and objective that they're trying to achieve in certain industries there are more industries that they prioritize than others because of their ability to be effective in in helping them achieve their overall objective which is sustainable industrial or in building sustainable industries so obviously they're going to prioritize those businesses that fall under industries that it's easier to achieve 
um, that industrialization goal and objective. They want you to also talk in your executive summary about the funding that you require, how much they actually require. And then they also want you to touch on jobs that will be created. Again, they want to support industries that can be sustainable and that can be able to create the maximum or the most number of jobs. The second aspect that they wanted to touch on on the business plan is legality. And it's so important that we focus on legality. And I usually just call this legality space, I just reference it or refer to it as compliance. So they want you to talk about your registration. Are you registered? Provide the documents, your taxes. Are you known by the taxman? There is no government institution or entity or organization that is going to work with you when your things with SARS are not in order. They will not, you're not attractive. Because obviously it would be kind of productive for the government to be supporting um, and a, a business that does not contribute back to taxes. I mean, it wouldn't really make sense. And they also want you to focus on, you know, your FICA requirements, the proof of address of the business, your the ID, um, um, ID information, the identity information of the directors of the business, things like that are very much important. The next area they want you to cover in your business plan is information regarding the management and the shareholders. This is very important because they remember they're going to be pumping millions into this initiative. So they need to understand who is going to be running this thing, who's owning this thing so you need to provide things like the profiles like complete profiles of the shareholders of um, the lead management um, the experience motivate for the experience and when you are building your business I'll give you this tip for free when you are building your business find a way to integrate experience in that business né? so as you are growing the business when you are recruiting people into management positions who are going to be leading the process of you know um, handling some of the units make sure that you prioritize experience so you'll also be required to motivate the experience of the people that you're going to be working with in the business they also want you know um the the documents that prove that these shareholders are legally part of this business like your mois or your shareholders agreements depending on the structure of the business they want uh, things like your um the shareholders um balance sheets to also be provided and obviously the last thing that i will mention there's others but i'm just mentioning the important ones they also want you to have um you know a, a, a part where you're going to be talking about the contribution of each shareholder if they're going to be contributing in kind in money in assets in whatever but there needs to be a part that talks to what the shoulders are going to be contributing to the business. Another important area that they're emphasizing on those guidelines is the triple BEE element of the business needs to be reflected with clarity. Okay, I'm going back to the fact that this is a government-owned um, entity. The IDC is a government-owned institution. So obviously, they need to be as aligned to what the government is trying to achieve as possible, including, you know, the, the, the policy, the implementation of the broad-based Black Economic Empowerment Act. So... There, there needs to be a clarity in terms of the company itself, you, the applicant, the company itself, in terms of your triple BE rating. And we we should also know, I think maybe I need to do a video that talks to the triple BE and helping to understand it better because it does not only mean that you are black. It does not only talk to your blackness. There are other elements that are important within the scorecard that reflect, um, um, that actually reflect other ways in which the business ensures transformation but i don't want to get into it right now another area that is important within the business plan according to the idc guidelines is the area that talks about land and buildings now this is a problem do you know why because as a funder as an investor into your business i cannot put my this time it's not hard earned, but it's like, you know, taxpayers money. I cannot put taxpayers money into a business that will have a challenge at the end of the day. Like once maybe we'll put it down infrastructure and build a factory or whatever. And the next thing is that there's someone who's going to come up and, and make claim to the land on which the infrastructure has been, you know, put in. It, 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 it just can never make sense. So it's important for you to give them comfort in terms of the land and building. Number one, you need to provide evidence of your permission to occupy that land. Like what evidence can you prove that says you can operate in that land if there's a lease agreement if you have bought the land there's a title deed there's a pity whatever it is but you need to provide some kind of evidence to say this is the land that we are legally supposed to operate on the second area that's very much important that relates to land and buildings is uh, the the importance of looking at regulatory compliances that are required things like i'll make one example permits licenses um, i'll make an example with an environmental impact assessment 
depending obviously on the business and the industry that you operate in their regulatory compliance that you know apply to specific industries that you need to uphold so for instance if you if you're going to operate a business that requires an environmental impact assessment you must have done it they do say provide that evidence within the business plan and they also say that if you have not yet completed it like maybe it's still in process at least provide evidence that you have applied for this and then if there will be any improvements that will be involved in um you know the actual existing business and its infrastructure or maybe if there's going to be a purchasing of like a building you need to provide things like quotations what are the terms that relate to that uh, building works quantified and also things like technical drawings the next area that you're going to be looking at is capital expenditure obviously with the level of um you know support and funding solutions that the idc has there will be capital expenditure most of the time with whatever kind of application that goes through so they want to understand with the capital expenditure that you are requiring you need to get quotations you need to get terms of payment like will these uh, suppliers require deposits what, what are the payment terms that are relating to any capital expenditure that you're going to do what are the warranties and guarantees that are involved make sure that when you are requiring and requesting this um as you're building your capital expenditure make sure that it's sufficient don't leave things out because the problem is that you're going to get an amount of money let's say you calculate and then you get to like you want like 10 million only to discover that you should have applied for 12 because there are things that amount to 2 million that you do not include that you made a mistake or an error or you ignored and now you cannot get the full potential of the production that will come with the 10 million because the 2 million is 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 material yeah but so it's very important that when you're doing your budgets for your capital expenditure you are as on point as possible like you your numbers they need to be so realistic and also whatever that is going to be a capital expenditure needs to be linked to the production capacity that you are reflecting within the business plan so you can't buy a machine you can't say you want a machine that's going to be producing 50 units per hour whereas in your calculations you are saying and in your business plan you are saying that you're going to be putting out 100 units per, per hour it, it will not make sense moving right along to the production talk about your production process the full process of production what does it include um what is necessary what capacity do you need the suppliers of the raw materials that you're going to be making use of and also any licenses and patents and trademarks that will be involved and important to the production process make sure that you also speak to those i think they also mentioned that it's important to have like a building layout so when you are presenting your production process use diagrams use um you know designs and also kind of give them a picture a feel in terms of diagrams and designs of what the production process is going to be like so that they have a pictorial understanding of how the production is going to be happening and the process that is going to be flowing when the production process is actually being undertaken another very important element that you need to talk to within your business plan is staffing okay that basically means people your employees that basically means employees of the the business itself and when you're talking about the employees number one you need to provide a list of all the employees that includes right from directors right to like you know like everyone whether they're employed permanently part-time casuals that information needs to come through because they need to understand i think they have a huge interest in this area because they're trying to understand how many potential jobs can this business actually be able to create so you need to give them comfort in that space two important things to keep in mind here the remuneration of the employees or your staffing or cost to company needs to be um, market related or at least not below the minimum wages please do not shoot yourself in the foot by doing that because obviously the government cannot be supporting that because they've set the minimum wages for a reason so you cannot have you know um, remuneration that would be less than um the minimum wage number two i want you to also make sure that you include the working hours and as you're including the working hours also reflect the entire plan um the entire plan of your staffing as aligned with your production for an example you can never say you are going to be um operating at a certain capacity in terms of production output every single day translated to weeks trans translated to months translated to year and you only have three people yeah, well, so it's going to throw you off so be realistic if one person can handle x amount of work then 
work from that make it as realistic as possible because if there's a mismatch between your staffing and your production capacity then obviously it means that your numbers are going to be off and your business is gonna is gonna look dodgy and it's gonna look you know they're gonna run away from it they're gonna run away from it another important area that you need to include is your market analysis you need to convince them that you have done proper market research and you have worked on understanding it so you want to include your sales projections you want to include your your competitor analysis what are their prices where they're located how do they do their products and services you need to include your customers now when it comes to the idc ne? and other um, government institutions that support in terms of funding uh, businesses, they actually want evidence, evidence-based type of, um, you know, customer confirmation. This means that you have a responsibility to say that whichever customer, and when you talk about industries, I think it makes a lot of sense. When you're talking about industries, you're going to be producing many units. So why not engage with your potential off-takers before you knock on the, on the doors of the funding um, providers and say, I'm going to be doing this factory. Would you be interested to work with me so that you can do things like um, your off-take agreements, things like your letters of intent, contracts, and things like that, because they are going to be very important as you reflect in your business plan, as you as you infuse information. You need to also reflect on which customers have you actually secured? How many units are they going to take? So that your numbers are linked to a real, you know, a, a real life situation and a realistic case. You need to also reflect on your competitive edge. This is basically, when I talk about competitive edge or competitive advantage, it's just basically answering the question that says, um, when you go to an interview, why should we hire you? Why do you think you're the best candidate for this job? So it's basically saying, why is your what makes your business unique? What makes your business interesting? What makes your business different? What makes your business preferred in terms of the market? What is that thing that puts you at an advantage over your competitors? Talk about demand and supply. Talk about your selling strategy. How are you going to sell? Like your sales strategy. What are you going to do to ensure that your products move into the market? And the last area that we're going to touch on, which is a very important area, is the financial aspect of the business plan. This is very, very important. And there are so many different things that they require. For example, the first one is... They want a five-year projections inclusive of your cash flow, your income statement, and your balance sheet. And when it comes to the cash flow, they want at least the first 12 months to be done on a monthly basis. How much have you applied for and what are you going to do with it? This, this needs to be reflected in your financial projections. For some businesses, they already have like um, commitments. So you also need to reflect any financial commitments that you have, like your loans, overdrafts, and things like that. They need to be built into your financial plan. For existing businesses, you also need to reflect financial statements, at least for two years, two-year financial statements for previous years, and also include um, up to date, like to date when you are doing the application management accounts. So management accounts that are to the date, like to the time when you are submitting your application, they also need to be part of your submission. Another element that you need to include as you're working on those financial, financial projections and your financial plan is your current assets and not current as in, but the, 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 the reflection of the existing, yeah, that's the right word, the existing assets and liabilities. And yeah, this is just um, for me to give you a high level overview and an understanding of what the IDC will require if you want to make use of their funding solutions, especially pertaining to the business plan. And I think I like the fact that they have given guidelines, but I always say this all the time. Whenever you're going to be engaging with a financier, a financing institution, a development finance institution or whatever kind of a supporter, investor into the business or stakeholder that's going to be coming in and bringing money, they will have guidelines in terms of what they're expecting. Your responsibility is to go and understand those guidelines and when you understand them make sure that you follow them to the t thank you so much for joining us today that is all from me for now but before i go thank you so much to my existing subscribers and those that i knew if you loved this video make sure that you actually subscribe to this channel you are actually going to be so helped to grow every single time you come out of the video and yeah thank you so much for tuning in until next time stay absolutely blessed